The movie starts as a girl named Young Woo quietly observes a whale toy hanging by the window while her father converses with their pediatrician. After learning about her inability to speak, the doctor confirms that Young Woo is autistic. On their way home, an angry neighbor confronts dad and accuses him of having an affair with his wife. Young Woo's dad tries to deny it, but the angry neighbor starts attacking him. Seeing this, little Young Woo becomes terrified. Suddenly, she starts reciting the law about inflicting bodily injury and the potential consequences that the neighbor could suffer. Hearing this, the angry man is taken aback, and he finally stops attacking her father. All the neighbors are equally astonished to hear Young Woo talk for the first time, but her dad is incredibly overjoyed. While barely containing his happiness, he takes Young Woo to their room and asks where she learned the law. Young Woo says, 4chan, daddy. <laughs> She shares that she learned while reading many of her dad's books about criminal law. She further goes on to reveal the rest of the articles from the book. Later, the neighbor's wife visits to apologize for her husband's behavior, and let's be real, probably to get some seconds, and delivers some ointment while Young Woo's dad cries tears of joy. Both are more than impressed to find that Young Woo is actually an autistic genius. In the present, an adult Young Woo wakes up for her first day of work. Her room is decorated with whale toys as she's obsessed with the mammal. Before leaving, her dad instructs her not to talk about whales in the office. While Young Woo heads out for her first day at work, dad is proud as his daughter is the first ever autistic attorney in all of Korea. When Young Woo finally arrives at her workplace, Hanbada Law Firm, she meets a man named Jun Ho who guides her in the lobby and takes her to her superior, Attorney Jung's office. Young Woo then meets Jung along with his associate, Su Yan. After Young Woo briefly introduces herself, Attorney Jung takes her application to CEO Han and confronts her for accepting Young Woo despite her autism. However, CEO Han negotiates with Attorney Jung and makes a deal to give Young Woo a chance. According to the deal, Young Woo will be immediately fired if she isn't up to standards. After returning to his office, Attorney Jung gives Young Woo her first case. It involves an old lady in her 70s, Miss Choi, who has hurt her husband, Mr. Park park with an iron after they got into a heated argument. It turns out that the husband had accused Miss Choi of flirting with a delivery man, and in frustration, she aimed an iron at his head. Because of this, Mr. Park fell unconscious and suffered a brain hemorrhage. Miss Choi was eventually charged with attempted murder. Following this, Attorney Jung takes Young Woo to meet with Miss Choi, who is taken aback by Young Woo's behavior. However, she soon learns that they used to be neighbors 22 years ago. It turns out that Mr. Park is the same man who had accused Young Woo's father of having an affair with his wife. Later, Young Young Woo starts digging into the case and asks about the couple's source of income. She learns that Mr. Park, now suffering from dementia, is a retired section chief. The couple has been living off the pension, and the house is actually in Mr. Park's name. With this information, Young Woo tells Attorney Jung that Miss Choi couldn't have attempted the murder, as without her husband, she wouldn't have any income to survive. Attorney Jung is impressed with Young Woo's critical thinking and apologizes for calling her an ordinary attorney. Next, Young Woo is assigned to meet Mr. Park at the hospital along with another employee. While waiting in the lobby for the employee, Young Woo learns that Jun Ho is the one who has to accompany her. The two formally introduce themselves, shake hands, and make their way to the hospital. After arriving, the doctor informs them that Mr. Park has suffered a subdural hematoma, typically caused by external injuries. He is confident that it was from the hit with the iron. Afterward, the two go to the room where the elderly couple is staying. After learning that Young Woo is the same girl who recited the laws to him 22 years ago, Mr. Park feels threatened. Hence, he starts hurling obscenities at her. Because of this, Young Woo and Jun Ho are forced to leave while Miss Choi tries to calm her husband down. After their messy ordeal at the hospital, Young Woo and Jun Ho return to Attorney Jung's office. Attorney Jung declares that they should try to push the case into a jury trial to give Miss Choi the best chance of winning. In the next scene, it's trial day, and Young Woo looks around the courtroom before settling in. The case begins, but Young Woo struggles to check in when the judge takes attendance, prompting Attorney Jung to speak for her. However, when she notices her friend and dad among the attendees, she gathers some courage and starts representing the defendant. Young Woo begins by clarifying to the court that she has autism spectrum disorder, so her speech and behavioral patterns might be a bit awkward. During their questioning, the prosecution is much harsher on Miss Choi, but Young Woo manages to help Miss Choi with some of the questions. After the case concludes for the day, Attorney Jung confronts the prosecutor for being too harsh on Miss Choi, but the prosecutor makes it clear that he isn't backing 
down. Attorney Jung then concludes that they have no choice but to bring Mr. Park in himself to testify in court. The next day, in the hearing, Mr. Park appears in the courtroom. Seeing him, Young Woo gets nervous, as the man is infamous for his sudden outburst. However, Attorney Jung encourages Young Woo to use this as a weapon so that everyone can see the real nature of Mr. Park. Young Woo agrees, and when she approaches Mr. Park, as expected, he gets upset and starts hurling obscenities. His intense reaction makes the judge order him out of the courtroom before the trial can resume. After a while, Young Woo starts her statement, but there's a problem. Mr. Park died on his way to the hospital. The news shocks everyone in the room, and the charge will now change from attempted murder to murder. I guess she struck while the iron was hot. Yow! Following the incident, Young Woo carefully focuses on the crucial parts of the case. She studies the case file and finds out a very important detail. It turns out that Mr. Park had a headache even before he was hit by the iron. This means that he already had a brain hemorrhage before the iron strike. So, at the next court date, Young Woo brings up all of her findings in front of the doctor who diagnosed Mr. Park. With all the facts presented to him, the doctor eventually confesses that the brain hemorrhage could have been spontaneous and caused by a pre-existing illness. This causes the jury to lift all charges from Miss Choi, and the trial concludes. A few days later, Jun Ho delivers good news to Young Woo that Miss Choi has been found not guilty of murder and received only probation for the crime of inflicting bodily injury. Just then, Miss Choi arrives at the place and expresses her gratitude to the extraordinary attorney before sharing a warm hug. The next case is about a bride whose wedding dress slipped while walking down the aisle. Hence, the bride's father takes his small pee, -pee energy and sues the hotel, which belongs to the groom's family, for such a humiliating disaster. It all starts when a bride and groom prepare to walk down the aisle. As the guests applaud happily for the newlywed couple, things halt when the bride stops to glare at the crowd for a while. The groom abruptly pulls his wife's hand, causing the dress to slip. Things escalate quickly as everyone stares in shock after the bride's Buddha tattoo on her back is exposed. Here, we get to know that the groom's family is strictly Catholic and that they despise any other religion except for theirs. At Han Bottle Law Firm, the bride's father, Mr. Kim, shows up to consult with CEO Han and Attorney Jung. He wants to sue the hotel venue, Dai Hyun Hotel, for the disastrous wedding event, which included the designing of the wedding dress, too. Here, we get to know that Dai Hyun Hotel belongs to the groom's family. Although the hotel is already offered to give a full refund for the wedding, plus additional compensation, it's not enough for Mr. Kim and his small PP, and he demands at least a billion won. In a meeting with his team, Attorney Jung goes over the case and claims how difficult their next task will be. They will have to find a solid reason to support that the hotel is to blame for the incident. Since the hotel doesn't give information openly, the team has to go undercover. Su Yan and Jun Ho will pretend to be a couple and visit the Dai Hyun Hotel, while Young Woo will go with another colleague to talk with the bride and groom. In the following scene, Young Woo and one of her associates meets with the bride, Hua Yang, at her parents' house. She reveals that the groom's grandfather tried to cancel the wedding because of her tattoo of the Buddha. The attorneys also learn that the wedding dress was loose when Hua Yang first tried it on, so the hotel staff used pins to tighten it. Additionally, Young Woo notices that there are no pictures of her fiancé around the house, and Hua Yang has even removed her wedding ring. She then asks the bride if she loves her fiancé, but the latter struggles to come up with an answer. Next, the attorneys meet the groom, Jin Wook, at his hotel, Dai Hyun. He shares that it was his grandfather who initiated the marriage. To their surprise, the attorneys also learned that Hua Young has also been seeing a psychiatrist following the wedding incident. Meanwhile, Min Wu and Su Yan are tasked with confronting the hotel as undercover agents. They have to try on some wedding dresses so that they can find something suspicious and use it against the hotel in their ongoing case. However, Su Yan suddenly gets an upset stomach and rushes to the hotel restroom. Since she doesn't feel too well, Su Yan stays behind in the toilet and asks Young Wu to go in her place. As a result, Young Wu reunites with Jun Ho and tells him that they will have to call each other sweetie now, meaning the two will have to act as a couple. They hurry for their meeting with the director of the wedding business. Later, they sit on the hotel sofa and pretend to book a wedding date. After a while, they also look at the available dresses and pick out a dress similar to the one Hua Young wore for her wedding. The director isn't satisfied with Young Wu's choice of dress, but the latter is adamant about trying that fit. In the meantime, Su Yan, who is still suffering from her stomach ailment, overhears Ji Hai, a hotel employee, talking in the restroom about how another employee was fired following the dress mishap. She immediately calls Jun 
Ho and informs her about the finding. Jun Ho then follows Ji Hai into the staff room and inquires about the fired employee's contact information, but she isn't willing to give away the information so quickly. After a while, Jun Ho returns to the room where Young Wu is clad in a white gown with a bouquet in her hands. Jun Ho is at a loss for words after seeing her. However, they don't find anything suspicious with the dress. The only sus thing is that she must be on the run from heaven because she looks like an, <laughs> an angel. <laughs> That sucked. In the next scene, Attorney Jung and his team sit with the judge and Dai Hyun Hotel's legal team. It's clear that the hotel's team isn't backing down, since it can damage their reputation. While Young Woo and Jun Ho spend some alone time together at a bakery, they spot Ji Hai and again plead for the fired employee's contact information. This time, Ji Hai finally opens up about the incident and informs them that the employee has left the country. Moreover, she also agrees to be a witness to the case and testify in court. On the first day of the trial, Ji Hai arrives to testify as a witness to the wedding incident. She testifies that the incident was not completely an accident and reveals that the dress was torn by the fired employee, Lisa, on the morning of the wedding. With time running out, the team director scrambled for a replacement with a larger size of the same dress. Because of the mishap, Lisa was humiliated and fired immediately after the wedding. This puts the hotel at fault, but it's not a win yet for Team Hanbada. In a shocking turn of events, the hotel's attorney calls upon the bride to the stand. There, they reveal that the bride had made posts on a website called Waggle, where she confesses her relief at the outcome of the ceremony. Apparently, she's not into the groom, and only went ahead with the arrangement because her father wanted to be in-laws with a wealthy family. Attorney Jung and his team are shocked to hear this side of the story, and later convince Hua Young to tell the truth. Later, in the attorney's office, Hua Young finally shares the reality of the marriage. She reveals that she would have received a sizable amount of land as a wedding gift. In this way, the marriage was more of a business deal than a relationship. Just then, Young Woo flips the compensation argument around. She claims that since the marriage was hinged on that promise and Hua Young couldn't go through with the wedding due to the hotel's negligence, the hotel should compensate for the loss of the land. This means it would raise the amount of compensation from 1 billion up to 3.32 billion. Hua Young's father is beyond happy to hear the news, but Hua Young doesn't want the compensation and vainly tries to talk her father out of it. At the next court hearing, the groom's uncle, the chairman of Dai Hyun Hotel, testifies and admits that he was aware of the land as a wedding gift. This revelation becomes a win for Team Hanbada, but things quickly take a sharp turn. Hua Young suddenly raises her hand and announces to withdraw from the lawsuit. Everyone in the room, including the attorneys, are left in utter disbelief. A flashback then shows a brief conversation between Young Wu and Hua Young in her office, where Hua Young learns that she has the right to withdraw from the case, hence losing the 3.2 billion won they were about to get. Back in the courtroom, Hua Young Young's father bursts into anger and lashes out at his daughter. However, this time, she's done with her father being so oblivious about her life. She reveals that she's Buddhist, not a Christian. Neither is she straight. In fact, she is in love with a girl. This is the reason she doesn't have any pictures with the groom in her room, because that shit kills her vibe. Instead, she keeps pictures of her and her girlfriend. This girlfriend also attended her wedding, and that's why she's shocked when she saw her in the ceremony, which ultimately resulted in the slip. With her newfound confidence, she marches out of the courtroom with her girlfriend, while her father has a mini heart attack. Good. After the case concludes, the team heads out together for a meal on CEO Han's treat. Gang, we're going to McDonald's. Following the dinner, Jun Ho waits outside the restaurant for Young Woo, but she is in a hurry to go home. When Young Woo arrives home, she delivers some seaweed sushi to her dad. The father-daughter duo then starts chatting. The whole wedding saga has Young Woo thinking about her future, and she admits to her dad that she probably won't be able to get married because of her autism. However, if she does get married, she's definitely giving her bouquet to daddy, as she like to see her single father get married after she does. In other words, even with my handicap, I got a better shot than you do, you dork. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.